Well, okay. She just told me to drive the highlighted route, so you missed that little detail. That's the, uh, well, okay. <laughs> All right, so where are we here? Let's see. Let's take a second and figure this out. I know I'm somewhere. Uh, I happen to be in Deming, New Mexico. Uh, let's see, probably about an hour still west of El Paso, Texas, I believe. It's something like that. About uh, got an hour to go to get to El Paso is what I'm saying. <laughs> it is Friday, October 16th, 2020. Current local time, 12.15. And uh, temperature outside, I'm not going to be able to let you know quite yet. As we've been sitting here for a bit, it's showing me 77, which means it's a little bit cooler. It's probably about 70. And uh, yeah, quite nice actually. Very nice morning out here in the desert of Deming, New Mexico. Yep, and so we're about to get underway. Just completed my pre trip. And uh, gave the windshield a little bit of a wash. And uh, yeah, time to go. See this little field here in front of us here. This little—it's uh, hardly a field, is it? We call it a—we call it a, an area. How about that? Uh, boy, I, yeah. Turn I happen. Right. Well, let me back. Let me back up. Turn right. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. So yesterday, my day started at uh, right. basically 8:30 a.m. Right. And, uh, you know, ended up getting loaded and, you know, getting unloaded and then getting loaded at a different place. And I got that all pretty well on, on, uh, on video there. Sorry, pal. I don't have anything for you. Um. And uh, once I got loaded, I basically got underway, and that was at whatever time, I think like 6 o'clock or something, 6.30, I don't remember. And, um, ah, son of a bitch, I forgot to hang up my freaking curtains. I forgot to stow them, I mean, you know what, I need to go deal with that, otherwise they're going to be blowing around all over the place. Damn it. See here, I thought I was ready to go. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I hate pulling off on the rock like that. You never know what's down there. Continue on I-10. All right, hang on, Sheila. Hang on, you two. Uh, just give me a second. There you go. See if you can see what I'm doing here. Oh. Yep, my little curtains here. Okay, we're back. We're forward view again. So, yeah, let's see here. Get myself resituated. I just started kind of falling off. I don't know. I just started getting tired. I 
I still had like three hours of drive time left on my clock. But I was looking at, you know, uh, what was ahead of me. You know, basically kind of how you do it is you see, you know, you go, okay, how much drive time do I have left? Okay, three hours. You know, at this speed, you know, going where I'm going, where am I going to wind up in three hours, basically? That's how you kind of do it. Or that's how I do it. And, uh, you know, there was a couple, you know, possibilities that were coming up. Basically, I had an hour left to go to get to El Paso. I knew for sure I didn't want to wind up looking for parking in El Paso. I knew that for sure. I did, however, want to get beyond El Paso last night during the night just because, you know, it's a big city. You know, you have to wind up dealing with traffic during the day. Um, but anything beyond El, El Paso was really sparse and, uh, you know, quite a good ways away. You know, I mean, it was basically anything beyond El Paso that, you know, that I knew would work was gonna be, you know, like a four hour still remaining drive. And I just went, you know what, what do I got coming up here shortly? And it just happened to be a Petro, you know, you know, coming up within like 10 miles or something, you know, I was sitting there deciding. I was like, you know what, I don't, you know, <laughs> this load I have plenty of time to drive it there it doesn't uh, deliver until uh, oh what is it let's see Friday Saturday Sun Monday morning at uh, 5 30 a.m. and it's you know Friday you know noon right now basically <laughs> so I got you know tons of time to make that trip you know as long as nothing goes wrong and, you know I'll be there Sunday Actually, I'll be there likely tomorrow night, or, well, if not tomorrow night, Sunday, you know, midday at some point, so, so you know what, heck with it, I'm tired, I, can, I feel like I could go ahead and get some sleep, so I did, and uh, pulled off there in that big kind of lot area, that dirt lot, and man, that thing was just loaded with big, giant, like, potholes, I guess. Be kind of hard to call them potholes. What they reminded me of actually <laughs> were uh, the big giant moguls that you go over when you go, you know, snowboarding or snow skiing. You know, those big giant moguls. I don't know if you've ever done it, but they're huge, right? And that's what it, that parking lot reminded me of, just loaded with big giant moguls. <laughs> so I tried to weave my, weave my, weave my way uh, through them and around them as best I could parked in that lot and shut it down, rolled down the windows a little bit, and uh, boy, I, I fell off. I did. I fell off nice and quick. So, that was good. And then, uh, yeah, it hopped up uh, not too long ago, and uh, basically got myself together, brushed teeth, all that good stuff, got my coffee. I actually bought a little coffee machine. Um, for the truck, you know, it plugs into a, uh, you know, a, a vehicle outlet, one of those 12 volt outlets, you know. Um, it's funny, I don't know, you know, why it works this way in often cases, but you buy a coffee machine from someplace, but they don't sell the coffee. <laughs> they don't sell ground coffee, so I'm going to have to find ground coffee somewhere. Um, but whatever, it's cool, it's just, you know, probably a one or two cup kind of graph thing or whatever and that's perfect it's all I need and basically what that does for me is uh, it gives me more options on where I pull off and crash at night because I don't know I do I need my coffee in the morning it's just still yeah I'm, just, I'm stuck with the coffee thing I don't know it's like yeah I don't know I don't know I've gone periods of time in my life where I didn't rely on coffee first thing in the morning, but generally if I'm going to work, I, do, I want some coffee. So, and that's what I'm doing. So the temperature gauge has uh, settled down now. 
to 72 degrees. It's nice out in the middle of the desert. It's quite nice right now. I know it won't stay that way because we are uh, quite a bit, uh, you know, more south than uh, say Albuquerque area. You know, we're we're actually going to be going right past. Uh, they roll these windows here so we can so we can talk better. Uh, we're going to be going right past Juarez. You know, El Paso is just right there, it's border town. So uh, I'm quite certain that it will be warming up as the day goes on. It was quite hot last night for the majority of the drive in the 90s, even until, you know, it, into the time that, you know, point in time. Well, actually, no, that's not true. I think last night when I pulled off, it was around 68, I think. Maybe even a little bit less, if I remember. Chances are it's on a video somewhere, and I'm just forgetting. But uh, as I said, I'm still foggy headed here. Yep. Mile marker 77. So 77 miles within the state of New Mexico currently. Um, we have, whoops. We have 1,787 1, miles yet to go. Wow, look at these cactuses. Wow, that's cool. Or is it cacti? <laughs> you really want to stick it to me. Oh, cacti. There goes some border patrol, so you know we're close to the border. <laughs> there he goes. Let's see. Let's see if I can zoom in on his ass. Hey, Border Patrol, doing a good job, buddy. Um, yeah, so 1,787 miles yet to go to uh, Midway, Georgia. And uh, that's about all I can tell you on that. Maybe I can find out what we got to El Paso, too, because that is uh, something that I would like to know. So 106 miles to downtown El Paso. So we're still a little bit further off than I was thinking. But uh, there we go. I mean, hence, hence uh, <laughs> the reason where why I pulled off where I pulled off. And uh, it's cool because I got a coffee maker out of the deal. That, I mean, you know, I paid for a coffee maker. It's just, you know. Whatever. It was a, that, that was a cool Petro, actually, down the back there. Demi. Nice big, uh, yeah, big store, and they had a lot of stuff there. You know, some of some of the TAs, Petros, whatnot, you go into, just aren't that big, you know, you know, and don't have some of the items that, you know, maybe you've been eyeballing for a while, and you're like, oh, I want to get that, you know, now, and you go in and they don't have it. This particular Petro was loaded. They had a lot of stuff there. I just grabbed the bottom coffee maker, basically. <laughs> I didn't look for anything else, because I, uh, I can sometimes kind of like get stuck in there looking at all the cool CB radio stuff, and, you know, GPS things and all this stuff. I'm like, man, that's cool. Yeah, man, I want to get that. I want to get that. And I'm like, you know what? I don't need it. <laughs> Why not wasting a bunch of time in there? But the coffee coffee maker, that'll, that'll be a, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think I can go wrong with that. Yep. Plugs into a cigarette lighter in your car, you just can't go wrong with that. You know, you got coffee anywhere you go, basically, at that point. So, that is cool. Beans. Turkey. Oh boy, I better slow down, huh? Yeah, I bet you the cops around here don't, uh, don't mess around with speeders. I just get that hunch all of a sudden. So what, the coffee maker, let's see, how much did that thing cost me? I think it was, yeah, $29.99. $29.99. They're still doing the 99 cent thing to us. You know that? You ever notice that? Like, I don't know. Like, they used to do that. You know, they started doing that to basically kind of trick the mind into thinking that you're not paying as much for it as you are, right? 
and they're still doing it, so it's interesting, I don't know, because I think people are pretty well hip to it, you know, people know that that's what the thing is, but they still do it. Maybe it's just a way of them being able to uh, blast you with the number of the beast upside down, you know, because everything, if it's $29.99, five, you know, or uh, $59.99, you know, uh, you know, $9.99, whatever, yeah, you get the number of the beast upside down. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. You never know. Crazier things have happened. <laughs> There's that conspiracy theorist, Kelly. <laughs> Bullshit. They're always talking nonsense. <clears throat> Alright, what town do we got here, I wonder? I wonder. I didn't see a city limit sign. Maybe it's still Deming. Very well could be. Maybe this is downtown Deming. Yeah, it probably is still. This is like main, main town Deming. They keep the truckers, the ugly truckers, out of... Uh, as much as possible and give them a, give them a fuel station like out, on the, outside the city limits. <laughs> yeah. And uh, by the way, I am still eastbound I-10. Figure I better uh, identify that. Of course, anybody who uh, has a little ingenuity and a map in front of them might be able to figure that out just with all the uh, information I've already said. I-10 is cool too, I like it. I don't know. It's, uh, the majority of it I did last, you know, was last night, nighttime. Oh wow, there's like a big, like, cool, like, resort, like, pond thing down there. That's kind of cool, like an oasis out there, like in the middle of the desert out there where like people hang out at like a beach. And they got like trees down there and picnic table, picnic ground, uh, maybe even fishing. You know, it might be one of those uh, little catch and release ponds or something like that that you, get, you, know, you can bring your kids to or something. They have one of those in Albuquerque, which is uh, pretty cool too. Not as nice though as this one, I don't think. It was nice, but maybe not as nice. <laughs> yep, so what was I saying? I was in the middle of saying something when I saw that stupid pond. Oh shoot, I don't know. Still waking up. Like that, not even hills like mountains or whatever, you know. And it, 
<laughs> Being a truck driver, you got this air ride seat, so you kind of <laughs> you can kind of pull your feet up off the ground and just kind of ride it out, and <laughs> you just like it's like floating on a balloon. It's kind of a funny feeling, I don't know, and it's very much like a roller coaster is what I'm getting at. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you just like pick your feet up off the ground, kind of cross your ankles or whatever, with your feet up off the ground, let the air ride do its thing, <laughs> and it's kind of just all like floating. I don't know, it's a, it's a trippy feeling, and then you go like to the top of one of these mounds, like you'd be in the valley in the you know in the in the bottom of like almost like a swell on an ocean, right? be in the bottom part and uh, you know bottomed out on the seat and then you come to the top of the thing and it shoots you up in the seat and then the seat hangs you know there's hang time at the top end of the seat for a minute until uh, until you know it catches up with you and then you get to the bottom of the next one and then you and then it pushes you back down and you do it you know, I don't know it's it's goofy it's dumb I know but it's just something kind of cool about it, you know, give me a break, <laughs> I'm still a kid at heart, baby, I don't know, <laughs> so, there you go, anyhow, I'm gonna wrap it up here, I gotta wake up a little bit, I probably shouldn't be doing videos, 